In line with Fountain Pen Day last November 5, it felt like the proper time to introduce to you to my growing pen family. And as of this recording, I am currently in pen and ink piece, so I felt like it was a perfect time to talk about these pens, my inks, and some of my personal favorites. So I currently store my pens in this Muji two-layer drawer, and then this um, contraption here was given to me by my cousin. She had extra, so I have two layers of that. As you can see, my pens are mostly, I would say, coffee and tea inspired with milk. So if you can imagine a matcha espresso drink, that is literally the most accurate depiction of my fountain pen color collection. If not, I would say it's something an earth sign would also collect because I'm a Capricorn. So I'm going to walk you through every pen I own from beginner-friendly pens, to advanced pens, to more expensive pens, and finally, my all-time favorite grill pen. And then I also actually have Koweko pens here. They're stored in this really pretty tin. So yeah, they're still on the same color family. The first pen or pens would be the Platinum Preppy. So these are actually the same. It's just different in terms of packaging. So I'm going to talk about this white one first. This is the Platinum Preppy Per Panip. So Per Panip is a collaboration between Platinum and Kokuyo. I'm going to show you also a notebook that I have that is also in the same stationery line. This is called the Per Panip Turu Turu. So Perpanip is a wordplay with pen and paper and it's a collaboration with popular stationery and planner brand Kokuyo who is known for you know functional and useful stationery. So the main reason I bought it is it's very sleek looking, it's white and it is budget friendly. I got this off of Amazon for like 400 yen, so that more or less that's like 200 pesos, which is like $5. And it's pretty simple and straightforward when you open it. It has a 0.3 nib, and then the body is currently inked with platinum brown. And you can have a converter for this, but for platinum pens, I just use a cartridge like this and then I use a syringe to fill in ink. This is one of my everyday pens, mostly because it's easy to carry around. It's also very light. I wish you could like feel it, but it's one of the lightest pens I own. This is a similar type. So this platinum preppy, this is the original packaging. And this is the color yellow, so I bought this because I also have some of these for my diarist bundle and I wanted to provide it to some of my customers because again, Platinum Preppy is a great beginner pen. If you're switching from the regular gel pen to a fountain pen, this is the best bet you can have. This is currently inked with, actually I used a syringe for this, it's kind of messy, but it looks the same. So you have... The nib here, and then same filling mechanism. You have the cartridge, and I also used a syringe for this. The nice thing about Platinum Preppy is their cartridge is really big and holds a lot of ink, so it takes me so long to finish a whole cartridge. This is in yellow. I would say it doesn't really match my full collection. I might distash this soon. I've actually sold a lot of pens because they didn't spark joy anymore, so it's really an ongoing process. But yeah, similar body. It's also very light, and this is my highly recommended pen if you want to start into getting into fountain pens and you just want a budget-friendly option. The next one is another platinum. I would say all my beginner pens are platinum, but I was looking for a Pilot Kakuno, but I couldn't find the fine one that I wanted. So this one is platinum as well. This is a platinum little meteor. The ink mechanism of this one and the platinum preppy is also the same. So when you open this, what I find interesting is, can you see the nib? There is a star. I just really like that specific detail 
and it has a star. It's a bit more expensive. I think I bought this for like 500 pesos, which is like five dollars. No, for like which is like ten dollars from Shopee. It's a store called Ink Reservoir. And this color is particularly in vanilla yellow. This one I bought a plastic converter, so this wasn't really expensive. This is like a hundred pesos. And it's not bad. I wouldn't say it's one of my favorite converters, but you know, it does the job. So I haven't refilled this in a long time. Don't use it as much. But the writing feel of this pen and the platinum preppy is more or less the same because they use the same nib i would say like the biggest um differentiator is the fact that it doesn't have this pen clip and at the same time i don't know it really comes in a lot of nice colors if you're into sanrio they also have a uh, sanrio themed ones and pastel colored ones next we're going to go with my all-time favorite because it was my first foray into fountain pens so these are my Lamy Safari fountain pens as you can see from the previous video the mango is no longer here I decided to just retain the white and the Savannah green which is special edition pen for 2021 so this pen was my first ever pen this is probably the main reason I am never letting go of this I bought this in Japan when I was visiting and I think I bought it in Loft specifically in Shibuya I would say it was so nice because they came it came in a really nice packaging back then I didn't know anything about fountain pens so I used to just ink this with regular black ink and I would use it for sketching on trips so this Lamy is very dirty this is the EF nib extra fine I think I've always thought that I was an extra fine person because most of my pens, I used to use the Muji Point .38 and the Muji gel pens, the Zebra Sarasa. So ever since, I used to always just get EF. So this is an EF and it comes with some silver trims, like silver pen clip. But as I collected fountain pens, I realized that I love gold trims which i'll talk more about later on so in contrast to that when i saw the limited edition savannah green of course i had to get my hands on them because it is just the perfect shade of green like most of my items are actually like green i'm trying to figure out what else but i do have a a big green fascination so it's also matte which i love why is it dirty i have to clean it so this is matte compared to this and it has black trims oh i forgot to show you but these are both i both use converters for this so as you can see here this is my converter and then for the savannah green it's the same thing i got a fine nib though so this is a fine and I would say based on these two, this is actually more of my favorite. I got this from Fountain Pen Palenque but you can also check out Lamy Philippines on Shopee. They also have this and I like Lamy because it's just so simple to use and this is one of their key features, this hexagonal or triangular situation here where the grip just makes it so conducive to fountain pen writing and it's also very light so when i first got into fountain pens and i think this was my second pen i really learned how to use it properly thanks to lamy so lamy is also a german brand and someday i want to visit their factory and the price range for this is around 1500 plus pesos and it's a bit more pricey, it's like 20 plus dollars, but I would say like if you're a beginner looking to invest in a pen, this is a great investment because it's still really one of my favorite pens that I go back to because it's just so easy to use and it's very light. Now, if you're looking for a step up to Lamy, I would say they're kind of in the same department it's just that this is a bit smaller in size so the kaweko pens are some of my favorite also actually when i got into fountain pens i was more leaning into the german brands 
only because I love Germany. <laughs> also, I love Japan though, but I've been exposed more to Lamy and Kaweko. What are the the others I'm not really familiar with though, Pelican, but I used to own a Faber Castell pen. So Kaweko pens are small, at least the ones I got. I really like the branding of Koeko. I think that's one of the things that really hooked me on them. And the pens are also pretty good. I love the colors that they come up with. So these are both Koeko Sport pens. Koeko Sports are really great because they're super small and compact. So if you want to travel, for example, with your traveler's notebook, it's just so easy because it's so super, super small and compact and I like using them for well I haven't traveled in a while but you know it's just easy to carry around and I like putting it in my bag so when you roll them out they turn out actually pretty long but it's not very long so this isn't really preferred by people who have bigger hands or like want a more solid grip but this is relatively small I'll compare it to the Lamy See, it's not, I mean, like if you open it, yeah, there is kind of a difference here. So I would say this is perfect for petite hands or if you want something that's pocket friendly, you're always on the go. So this one is the Kaweko Sport Fine Nib in Macchiato. It's the Kaweko Skyline series. So the Skyline series have silver trims and the main reason that i got this is i really specifically love the color it's a nice nude color and anything that is named after coffee terms i am count me in on that that's something i always am particular with and i really love starbucks caramel macchiato and any macchiato drink so yeah i had to get it this is the fine nib i used to have an ef but i sold it I find that I am not an EF person as I, you know, gradually learned how to um, pick out the fountain pens that I need. My latest edition and easily one of my favorite pens is this limited edition Dark Olive. How can we not? It's super pretty and my inside joke is I call this Olivia Rodrigo. Hey, <laughs> shout out to Olivia Rodrigo. And I bought um, a, cr a gold pen clip because I felt super bougie and the dark olive and gold nib combination is just so pretty I think that's one of my biases like look at that green and gold I really like the combination and then this is also I use a converter for this as well so as you can see here it's a very tiny converter. I would say ink capacity of this is not as great as my other pens, which is also a problem. But, you know, if you're looking for a pocket pen, it's really a great one. I actually have a student pen on the way, Kaweko student, but it's not going to make in time for this video. This is also using a converter. Although, had I known I would get a syringe, I would actually just use syringe to ink the cartridges because the converter can be a little bit expensive. And yeah, the other accessories are kind of expensive for Kaweko. Um, the price of this is similar to Lamy. I think my pens are like 1520 pesos or um, $25 plus plus. So yeah, I don't want to collect any more Kaweko pens. I usually collect two pens per brand max. I don't really want to go overboard with it because I don't feel the need to unless I need to try different um, nib sizes. By the way, this is a medium nib. I don't know if it's obviously seen through camera, but it comes off a little thicker. I'll show you later in the pen test portion. Next up on my collections would be the Sailor and Pilot. Funny enough that the, the most beginner friendly pens I have and the most advanced pens I have are both Japanese nibs, but it is what it is. Oh, but I forgot to mention this one briefly. This is um, this is supposed to be before the Lamy in terms of pricing, but I've been looking for a flex pen everywhere and I didn't really want to invest in an expensive one. So this is the Canwrite Desire Flex and it's a nice amber body. 
and it also already has a built-in converter. I actually use this specifically for drawing. So it's a nice flex pen that you can use for drawing or lettering or even just writing but it's currently inked with a uh, permanent ink so that i can use it for travel illustration and for drawing so the only downside to this it, it has a certain smell it took me so long to get rid of it until now it's still there but it doesn't really bother me anymore and you can get this off of shopee i got this from a store called jump it which also carries a lot of fountain pen tools so this one is also priced a bit cheaper than Lamy. It's like, I think, 900 pesos. So it's not bad. How much is that in US dollars? Probably like 18 to 19 US dollars. And as usual, I went for the amber color because I am very much attracted to anything that is brown and transparent like this. So next, I'm gonna show you my sailor family. There are only two, and I don't really plan to expand unless there is a very pretty limited edition pen that will show up on my feed, but I hope not. So I first got this pen because I didn't really know if I needed a Pro Gear Slim. So this one is the beginner pen of Sailor. Is it the beginner pen? I would say it's one of the beginner pens. This is a Sailor Lequel, and it doesn't really have any specific branding. So this is uh, in the color ruby red and it's actually very light. I think the only heavy pens I have would be the Pro Gear Slim and the Custom which I'll show you later. This one is also very compact. You know, it's easy to carry around. I actually use this a lot for my planner because I don't know, it's just so easy to bring around and I usually use a pen case like this because I just store them in my bag. And it more or less is the same size as the PGS. So, of course, the nib is not um, engraved with, you know, the traditional Sailor 1911. This one is just simple, a simple nib. And I actually got the MF. It was my first time trying out the MF, which is medium fine. And I would say MF is one of my favorite nib sizes now because it's very distinct and it just makes my handwriting look extra nice so for sailor i got converters for both of these so this is the converter it's not bad in terms of ink storage but you know it's not very big as well but you know it does the job i'm pretty happy and i don't really write a lot with like i rotate around my pen so there this one I think it retails for like 1,000. No, it retails for like 2,000. Yeah, it's a bit more expensive. So I don't really want to recommend it for beginners, but it's worth a try if you're a sailor loyalist. But you know, for beginners, I would still tell you to get a platinum or um, a Lamy. But if you want a first time pen for a sailor, then this is one of my suggestions. It also has other pretty colors like rose quartz and i think there's like a pearly white color so if you're looking for pastels this is one of the pens that sailor has on the pastel side that isn't as expensive as their other pens so this one is the sailor pro gear slim shikiori in the color manu so manu is actually ten thousand leaves was it or something and you know me, I like anything that involves nature and I was actually hesitant on getting this pen because first of all, I was like, why did I need another pen? Op second one was because according to the description, it's like a metallic green and I don't like anything metallic. So when I was looking, I was like, oh no, it might be too metallic for my taste, but upon, upon, but upon my intuition, and I was like, okay, good luck to me. It actually looks not bad. It's also one of those pens that at first glance, they don't really come out with the color. It's like a bit dark, but it's a nice foresty green shade, I would say. And this is also in the MF. And I primarily wanted to buy this because I wanted to compare the writing method 
of this these two pens because they're both MF and there is a slight difference I would say so that's something to note in terms of weight this is also a bit heavier because comparing it to of course the platinum which is super light this is a bit heavy but I like pens with a bit of weight and if you post this my hands aren't very big and they're not very small it's like probably average it's pretty good. I don't find it bothersome and this is one of the pens that I can write non-stop with because it's very um, smooth to write in and especially if you load the sailor ink, it's like a match made in heaven. I don't know what current. I think this is like inked with diamine at the moment. But yeah, these are my sailor pens in both MF size. Now, my last but not the least pen aka my favorite pen out of the bunch and finally making its debut on my videos actually i have shown this in some videos but this is a very pretty pen this is called the pilot custom heritage 823 in the color amber and i got mine in fine nib and it's my first pilot pen I can't believe I shot up to the most one of the most expensive pilot pens, but it is what it is. So in the fountain pen community, they have this term called grail pen. So I would say this is my grail pen. And this um, filling mechanism is a bit different than all the other pens I have because this is called a vac filler. So this thing here... The reason why it's open is, according to some videos, I have to leave it open so that air can come in. But you basically have to pull in, pull it out, and then load it with ink. It holds a lot of ink, which is one of my selling factors. The second selling factor is, I don't know, I really like this uh, pen clip. And the colors, of course, you have amber and gold. And when I actually bought this pen, I was like, wait. It reminds me of folklore, like Taylor's a folklore. So I call this my folklore pen. And if this was me, this was probably me in a pen because I love brown and I love this whole like vintagey aesthetic. And um, this one was super funny. I was already considering where to get it. And then I randomly messaged Pilot Pens Philippines and they actually have it. So I was able to order it from them. And it came out faster than I expected, so I got this last September. The fine nib of Pilot, I would say, is also thinner than the fine nib of Alami, for example, because it's German. But, you know, this is one of my everyday pens. I actually use it specifically for my morning pages. I'm not gonna do a full flip, but you can see it here. And so far, I've been really happy with using this, which is probably why it contributed to pen piece. Because once you get into like the hang of using more expensive pens, at least for you know after a few months of trying out different pens, I realized that I'm not looking for anything else anymore. Wow, that's true love. By the way, I forgot to mention these two pens are um their nibs are more high end so this one is a 14k nib so the higher number your nib is the smoother the writing experience is like sailor also has a 21k which is for the pro gear because this is pro gear slim so pro gear is actually bigger but for the shikiori series it's more on the pro gear slim side they only release pro gear slim when they say pro gear slim it means it's 14k and then if it's a pro gear usually it's 21k which is like buttery smooth i've tried writing with one of my friend uni spans and it was gorgeous this one the pilot one is a 15k which is actually pretty good i'm pretty happy with it so i'm gonna show you a couple of pen tests later on so you can see how i write with these pens a quick disclaimer i didn't include my USB pen here because it's currently <laughs> I'm currently fixing it I disassembled it a few weeks ago and I haven't gotten into fixing it but I do own a USB Echo clear in M nib it's my first one of my first thicker pens and it's also a bit heavy I forgot to mention that 
the custom A23 is quite heavy. It's one of those pens where I don't really want to bring it a lot elsewhere because I feel like if I, you know, it falls, I think it already fell once, but it's a very heavy, heavy duty and it writes very sturdy. So sometimes I would actually not put the cap on because it's a bit heavy depending on long form or short form writing. If I'm going to write for morning pages, usually this off because it will take me like probably two or three pages to write and it, it kind of does cause a bit of strain with my hand. So yeah. All right, let's start with the platinums. So this one is platinum preppy. By the way, I'm using my Hobonichi cousin for the inking because I just found it more useful because it's Tomoe River paper. So this is currently inked with a cartridge brown. It's a nice regular looking brown, which is great for every day. And then for the Platinum Preppy yellow color, this is actually inked with Pilot Hiroshizuku Fuyugaki. It's a nice persimmon color. And it's also one of my favorites. Like it has a coralish color going on. It's nice and bright. As you can see, it's super smooth to write on these. So this is the Platinum Little Meteor. And it's currently inked with Tasha Ukiyo-e Sabimidori. And it's one of my favorites. It glides so smoothly on my Platinum Little Meteor. These all three have the same nib sizes, so they're not much of a difference. Next up, we have the Lamy Safari EF. This is also a nice teal color. This is the Sailor Studio. I have a tendency to match my inks with pens sometimes, not all the time. And this is one of those instances. So this is my Lamy Safari in F and it's currently inked with Robert Oster Avocado, my favorite, one of my favorite greens out there. And as you can see with the fine nib, it's really just, you know, the ink comes out more, it's wetter. Now let's swatch my Kaweco pens. So this is the Kaweco. Skyline Sport. Currently inked with the Pilot. Yoshizuku Yuyake. It's a nice orange color. Very autumn vibes. I use this a lot also. It's one of my first few Pilot bottles. So the dark olive is distinctively thick because it is an M nib and it's so smooth to write and though I am currently using Robert Oster Cafe Crema. I'm actually using this for a lettering piece. So it's really great for lettering if you want to use your fountain pen inks and like you need a thick fine liner pen, so this is my um, my foray into that. This is also one of my favorite inks, the Cafe Crema. It's like a brownish black, which is really great for every day. Moving on, this is the Canrite Desire. I actually have the Super Flex, but it's currently um replaced with my fine flex one because the fine flex feels more of an everyday writing situation and this is currently inked with rnk sketch ink lily it's very dark but it's actually like a sepia brown versus the regular black 
This is the My Sailor Likul. And this should give an idea on how MF writes. But the ink I'm using is not very pigmented. Or I would say it's not as wet as my usual. Because it's my first time using it. This is a Birmingham Antique Sepia. I'm using it because... I've heard lots of really great reviews about this ink, primarily because it does a lot of color changing. Like, now it looks gray, but later on it will look green. Um, it's one of those color changing inks, but I merely use it for my planner, and it's a great, like, everyday ink because it, it looks gray. So this one is a bit more um, fluid, I would say. Pro, Pro Gear Slim Shikiori Manu MF. What ink is this? This is, I think, Diamine. Diamine Evergreen. Why am I thinking about Katniss Everdeen at this point? Last but definitely not the least, we've got the Pilot. It's just so smooth and it writes like butter. Pilot Custom Heritage 823 Amber F. I actually forgot to write the colors of the others. But this one is currently inked with my new favorite. It's a Pilot Hiroshizuku Tsukushi. It's like a chocolate brown, but it has like reddish undertones, so I really like it. It's not super dark like Yamaguri, which I initially wanted to get, but I would say this one is my personal favorite from the Pilot Collection with Inaho. There, it's a nice chocolate brown shade. So here is a better look at all of the pens I've currently inked with for the time being so i would say it's like a mix of browns and greens and oranges and blues i was supposed to go like the full-on autumn route this november but there are just some pages of my journal that need blues so i was like wait that has to be somewhere so i'll show you some of the pages i've used with my um pen so the journal that I made, the diarist, is actually fountain pen friendly. It doesn't show the full-on shading properties, but it doesn't ghost as much as I expected. Maybe depending also on the ink. So at some point, I do want to do like an ink test and the pen test because if your nib is a bit thicker, it's really not going to perform well here. But in any case, I've written extensively using my fountain pens and I also try to write, if I remember, like the inks that I used for the specific spread. Um, this is a recent one I've done with the blues. So this is the Sailor Studio 462 where I did a review of, not really review, I wrote down some of the quotes I super liked from Sally Rooney's latest book, Beautiful World, Where Are You? As well as my current obsession, Avatar. It's my first time watching Avatar, so this was super nice. I think this is the uh, Sabi Midori. And it just matches so well with the whole like color scheme I was going for with the blues. So yes, blues are supposedly an important um, part of my ink collection and I'm currently working on a dune uh, Journal spread which will be something I'll be doing over the weekend fear is the mind killer And then for my tarot journal I want to quickly show you what it looks like because as of now it's not the most organized but My tarot journal I'm using a Hobonichi plain notebook for this, but it is really a place for me to really not only experiment with inks but also like match them with the corresponding tarot card that I got as well as um, really writing down a couple of things. I went into the whole crystal rabbit hole a couple of months ago so I also wrote a couple of meanings depending on what crystals I got and then um, these are like questions that I sort of reflect on and it's really important to me to have fountain pen friendly journal I realized for this because I use these for writing 
90% of the time now. I don't really reach for a gel pen or a ball pen unless I have to because the only downside is most of the inks are not um, water resistant and you know if I have to sign documents I really need to use a ballpoint pen or to label stuff on receipts but Generally, it's been such a useful tool for me to really round up how I'm feeling and as I mentioned I really like matching the cards with the colors that I use for the ink. I don't know It's just so satisfying. I actually haven't finished writing the page of swords one, but These are some of the ones that I've been using and I've been using a lot of different tarot cards at the moment as well so this notebook also I owe it a lot to this because this really kick-started my fascination for fountain pens because this notebook is fountain pen friendly and I would rotate with like different inks and this is how I learned how to swatch and figure out which ones I really like and I am never a creature of habit I think that's something you probably know by now or you just knew when I told you but at least you know that is a very fitting disclaimer because I never really even use the same journal twice or maybe use one journal every year. That's really not me. And I think that goes the same with my fountain pens and my ink preferences. So that is it for this video. And I do hope this gave you an insight into some of the pens I own as well as some of the inks. I currently have if you have more questions about fountain pens I'd be happy to answer them in the comments but you can also check out our patreon where we talk extensively about fountain pens as well as different inks swatching and feedback firsthand from some of my patrons make sure to check out patreon.com slash abc for that as well as my beginner video on fountain pens and hopefully i'll do more videos on fountain pens as i see fit just let me know what your suggestions are maybe inks or other properties that i have not yet explored or maybe like a draw with me i haven't done those in a while but yeah, make sure to also check out the links in the description for all the necessary information needed. And I do have exclusive videos as well on Patreon on fountain pens in general. So I do hope you can check that out. So this has been Abby and I'll see you guys in another video. Bye. Can we talk about the fact that I actually matched my, my nails a bit? to my browns, brown pens, brown represent. Okay, bye.